Hey guys, Automated Garage back today. We have a 2003 excursion in here, and this is gonna be another case of a shop taking advantage of someone. Let me turn you around here and we'll talk over what the story was and what we got going on so far. All right, 03 excursion said she was steadily getting a longer and longer crank. Uh, and then all of a sudden one day it would not crank after putting diesel on it. Um, took it to a shop, it was there for three and a half months, lost contact with the mechanic, quit calling her back. Um, her and her boyfriend, I think, went up there and supposedly the oil pan was pulled off of this and they couldn't explain to her why they had the oil pan pulled. So I was kind of worried as to what was going on with that. Wondering if they were doing something with the high pressure oil pump back there and possibly drop something out of the motor, hoping it went down the oil pan looking for it. I don't know. I can't really see a definitive sign that the oil pan was off of it. Everything is back together. Everything appears to be right. Only exception is there's no coolant in it, which that may be understandable. They may just put it back together for it to get towed here. I don't know. So uh, I got the battery charger on it. They're a little bit weak batteries. Let me get the uh, auto ingenuity hooked up and we'll see what we got on the scan tool when we go to crank it. All right, I didn't mention while we were out there, this truck is head studded. It is EGR deleted. It has the bulletproof diesel, external oil cooler, Mishimoto radiator, air dog, uh, fuel pump on it. You can hear that running, which I'm kind of wondering about that. Also, it sounds like it's getting a little aeration to it. Uh, only code we got, we got injector control pressure circuit low, which is understandable if you're trying to crank, not building high pressure oil. So uh, let me pull a couple things up here and we'll crank on it. All right, so we got our ICP, IPR, Fickham main voltage and Fickham sink. You gotta have sink, you gotta have all four of these to start along with fuel pressure, of course. So let's uh, crank on this. I wanna see if this low pressure pump, that's basically your engine oil pressure. We wanna see if that uh, jumps up or not when we crank on it also. Got a nice consistent engine turning over. IPR is maxed out. We're hitting, it's trying to build on. Well, looks like we're gonna stop there. And we built low pressure on. And that drops down really fast too. So we got a high pressure oil leak somewhere. This is 03, so you can probably guess where my mind's going already. We're going to that pump probably. So first thing I double checked earlier that we didn't show, I didn't make sure we got engine oil in there. That's very important. Uh, this is a factory cap, so that's good. And uh, I guess we're gonna pull it off real quick, make sure we have the correct factory filter in there. We're building low pressure oil on the dash, so that should not be an issue, but I just wanna double check that. And then we're gonna pull the degas bottle, air intake, and the Fickham off, and uh, air test our high pressure oil system through our IPR, and uh, see if we got a leak somewhere. Well, basically make sure the leak's not anywhere else other than the pump. Willing to bet it's the J-tube or the pump itself, or both, because that O-ring and the J-tube possibly also. So uh, let me get that going and we'll catch back up. All right, we got our handy dandy IPR air test tool from Accurate Diesel here. This is the ultimate tool to have for diagnosing your high pressure system, uh, especially compared to going through the ICP. Um, and on these, that's even harder because it's back there on the back. And I wasn't even thinking earlier when I start taking this apart about the, having the old school intake with the uh, crossover tube in the back, which is a lot of fun. I like them a whole lot. So uh, let me get this screwed in, air compressor's airing up, and then we're gonna pressure test this, see what we got. All right, air tester's on, that's what we got. No noise whatsoever. So, uh, like I said earlier, with this being an O3 um, weak pump, more than likely, so we're gonna go after this high pressure oil pump, put a new Ford OEM in it, um, probably go and replace the J2 while we're doing it and uh, get this back going. So I'm gonna get on the phone with Ford and get that headed on the way here. And as you can see, we got our intake removed and man, I really love the O3 intakes with that crossover in the back. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been removing the intake. If this was the newer style without the crossover tube, we could have got to that high pressure oil pump cover with just removing the turbo. But anyways, we sprayed brake clean all around it, got all the, the dust, debris, crap, all cleaned up from around it so it don't fall down on the motor. Our IPR was already removed from using our air tester to air test the system. We have our ICP already loosened up. So we're gonna pull that out and then we're gonna start taking all these eights out for the cover here. I'm wondering why this cover is so nice and new looking. If this was messed with also. So I'm anxious to see what's underneath here. like 
fresh paint on that thing. So removing the cover here, you just get you a putty knife and you gotta get it started working up underneath the edges here. Get it broke loose. And then you can graduate to something a little bit bigger. But just, it's got this right there with a the putty knife. It looks like a freaking new pump already. But what did they do wrong? What is that? Gooped up all on top of it. Well, we had no high pressure oil leaks when we air tested it. So I'm still thinking the same thing. There's silicone back there on that. <coughs> Looks like they put silicone all around the lid. You don't even have to do that. Well, what is this? laying down in here well I'm gonna work on getting this pump out all right we're taking our J tube off it's eight millimeters also you do not want to drop anything down in here so be very careful all right so for getting your J tube out this is a nice another tool from accurate diesel does high pressure oil lines on a 7.3 and all these fittings on a 6.0. You have a white O-ring down in here, which can sometimes leak. I don't know what kind of grease or whatever somebody put on this, but it is some goopy stuff. All right, 10 millimeters on your pump. Those were not evenly tightened whatsoever. Freaking grease all over everything. There is the O ring there. Get my pick. There's your O ring. So she did not say anything about them charging her for a high pressure oil pump, at least not that I recall, but we did have our O-ring here on the top. Y'all saw the O-ring on the bottom. The check ball is still right here in the body. I'm trying to tell what brand pump this is. I don't know. Maybe it was already in there from before. The truck has had a whole lot done to it. Anyways. All right, we got our new Bosch pump. We got a new J tube here. I've already lubricated the two inner O rings up in there. Part of what I didn't like on what I took off here is that retainer is so loose looking in there. I don't know. That inner O ring and that lock can give you trouble sometimes, which will let you not build high pressure oil, which I, if I don't remember what it was. I have to go back and look at the video. It was building about 200 pounds. So it was trying. But while we're here, I don't know the story with this pump. It's got pin marks and paint on it and everything else. For all I know, they may have thrown a used pump or something in it. So we got a new pump, new J2. We cleaned our lid up. We got our new OEM Ford gasket here. Uh, I've cleaned the surface up on the truck over there already. I've got my O-ring in the top with some grease to hold it in here. J2 comes with what the, the new D-ring is what they call these sometimes on it. There is a new D-ring in the package also with the pump. And this J tube, this is weird. I don't know why they do this, but they send the D ring with the new J tube also, even though there's one on it. So we're going to lube that up also, have that ready for the cover to go back on. And we should be good to go. So I'll catch up with y'all over there in just a minute when we're torquing this thing down. 
All right, we got our pump torqued. We got our discharge tube torqued. Everything's lubed up. Had a very good positive connection there where our discharge tube goes into the branch tubes there. Uh, torqued the pump to 23 foot pounds, eight foot pounds or 96 inch pounds on the discharge tube. Uh, it's also eight foot pounds for the cover. You don't have to goop this whole thing up with silicone like someone else had done previously. You're just looking at those back two corners where the back plate meets the block. That's the only place you gotta put a dab of silicone, that's it. So now we're gonna put our cover on, torque that down. I've got uh, new intake gaskets on the way here and then we can throw this together and get her cranked up. All right, we got our cover torqued to eight foot pounds. Uh, I'm now gonna reinstall the ICP and the IPR. The only other thing I'm gonna do is I did notice this looked rather shoddy here, which I don't know if they did it or somebody else had, but yeah, broke wires, not broke, but the insulation is coming apart on these. I've got another brand new pigtail, so I'm gonna cut back behind where this is broke, get some good fresh insulation that's not messed up, and uh, put a new pigtail on it, and then we'll get this put back together. All right, intake is on and torqued to eight foot-pounds. There is a particular sequence to this. I will post it right here. So yeah, follow that sequence. You basically go through it three times and you'll get a little turn on every single time and that has your intake torqued down correctly. So now uh, everything else is pretty easy from here on out uh, other than putting the turbo on and you gotta loosen those up pipes up to get that turbo on. Otherwise you'll never get it made it back up right. So get underneath the truck, loosen your up pipes on both sides of the manifold and you can leave the bolt in them. Just loosen them up where you move them around. You can get all this lined up so much easier and then we'll be ready to crank this thing up. So I'll catch up with y'all when this is all put together. All right, we are all together and ready to fire up. Um, I had to correct several things. There was a clamp missing on this charge air cooler pipe. Uh, another one was stripped out. Some bolts were missing to the ficum. Uh, radiator cap was bad. I had another used one that's still good sitting around. Um, several things like that. The wire harness before was in the wrong spot. Most of the manifold bolts were in the wrong spot with studs sticking up to rub on the harness. So we got all of that correct, put back together right. Transmission dipstick too was flopping around when it got here. So was the engine oil. So I had some more of those 10 millimeter nuts sitting around to put on the studs to secure that back down. So now we're ready to fire this thing up and see what it does. All right, we got all our stuff pulled up here. ICP, IPR, FICA main voltage, and this is FICA sink. So uh, fair warning, I did crank this over before I put the FICM on or nothing, made sure we were building high pressure oil. It did, so the system's probably primed, so hopefully it's gonna crank up here pretty short. We'll see. There we go. Just one long crank. get out there and we're gonna look everything over because I don't know if there's maybe something I missed that the previous shot maybe didn't have bolted down or hooked up correctly so let's go check all that so I'm sure y'all noticed this earlier in the video I was just sitting there checking everything I was like damn it I forgot to tuck that back behind the degas bottle so I'm gonna do that so don't think less of me I put that up there so I can get the wiring harness more out of the way, but I want to fix that real quick. And uh, as long as everything's good, we'll take this for a drive. All right, so we've been driving her for a while, running good. Of course, our oil temps are great with this because we got the uh, bulletproof diesel external oil cooler. 188, that's about as hot as I've got it to get to. Cooling temp staying good. Only issue I have found is her air conditioner is barely cooling. So we're gonna give her a call as soon as we get back and see if she'd like us to look at it and charge it up. I know she's on a budget. Um, anyways, so running great. Shot before, couldn't fix the problem. Just as simple as a high pressure oil pump. And like I said, we did the J tube just because I usually do that when I do the early style pumps. It's got those two O-rings in it. It's got the little locking ring. Uh, I don't know. It's just some good insurance to go on and do while you're doing it, I've always thought.
All right, guys, so we got her all fixed up. AC is cooling great now. We're down to 52 degrees is what it was blowing. It was two cans low on Freon, so that will, that'll do it right there. Um, anyways, enjoy jobs like this where somebody got treated wrong by another shop, brought it here, we made it right. Their truck's running, they're happy, we charged them a fair price, and they got a great job done. So anyways, simple as a high-pressure oil pump. Do the J-tube. I like doing that when you do the older style. It just kind of guarantees you're not going to have any problems underneath there when you go on and do that. You can replace the O-rings in the J-tube, but I tend to go on and replace the whole tube. So to each their own. Um, anyways, it's Automatic Garage signing out. Y'all check out all of our other content on the channel here. A whole lot of Power Stroke and Ford stuff on the channel. We got this other truck here. We started making a video probably two or three weeks ago. I had to wait for some parts to come in for it. That's another deal that we're getting right up for him also. Um, y'all probably recognize this truck from being in some other videos before she kind of got hurt the other day. Mercedes pulled out in front of it. So the body shop sent it here to get the front end right because the gearbox is toast on it. So we'll be making a video on that also. Um, so y'all stick on for all that. Check us out at Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. Go to automaticgarage.com. We got some merch on there if y'all are interested. If this video helped you out or any of my other videos helped you out and you feel like making a donation to the channel, I'll put our Venmo link right here. And uh, if you ever feel like something helps you out or you feel like donating to the channel, feel free to do it there. Ain't got to, but we'd appreciate it. So uh, anyways, we'll holler at y'all later.